The Brandon Peters Show may contain explicit language and detailed plot points. For more information on the show, stay tuned to the end of the episode. Here's Brandon. Uh, welcome back to Old Space Show. I am Brandon, and here with me today, he is human. He, but he's he's cool as a Trans Am Tony Shop. Yes, uh, it's true. I am 100% a human, and I do regular human things, so don't question it. There you go. Nope. nope. <laughs> uh, even though websites will question you, like, prove you're a human. <laughs> uh, today, uh, with this series of Old Space Show, is the one that uh, follows the exploits of a man in his car in the first season of Knight Rider, and today we're discussing <clears throat> the 19th episode of White Bird. This is an this is an interesting one. Uh, when Stephanie Mason, the woman that Michael Knight was going to marry when he was still Michael Long, she's accused of conspiracy. And Michael decides to come to her aid without revealing his new identity. All right, this is directed by Winrick Cobb. So he like does a lot of TV with stuff mm. catching my eye because this is the only episode he'll do. I'm going to start naming off this like all-star roster of stuff he's done because I'm just like, wow. Deep Space Nine. Those are the Star Trek for those who aren't cool. Yeah. That way you know, know what Deep Space Nine meant. <laughs> uh, Voyager, Enterprise, and the Star Trek World Tour. Uh, 24. Lois and Clark, The New Adventures of Superman. Spencer for Hire. TJ Hooker, Auto Man, Scarecrow and Mrs. King. War of the Worlds, the television show. Um, In the Heat of the Night, Millennium. It's a spinoff show from the Mm X-Files. Not really spinoff, but it was like, hey, if you like X-Files. Because it's a companion show, yeah. Uh, Jag, the show I never watched, but the world did for forever. (laughs) Uh, Angel, this Buffy spinoff. Chips, Fall Guy, Magnum P.I., The Rockford Files, Barnaby Jones, Battlestar Galactica. Uh, And... Hunter. Bow, okay, bow. he's a he's yeah, a like, genre guy through and it, through. Yeah, like I was just like, wow, okay, all the it started it caught my eye because I don't really you know the, the Star Treks people pop up here and they're like twenty four. I'm like, wait, what else he's done? I'm like, okay, so he's right. like the he's like the Alan Tudyke of directing. There you go, yeah, yeah, <laughs> there you go. Uh, written by uh, Virginia Aldridge and Catherine Hickland, uncredited. As a writer on this, interesting. So maybe Very interesting. She change some dialogue or something to do with it. Yeah, that, can, that can happen, and somebody deserve uh, credit. But uh, stars David Hasselhoff, Edward Mulher, Patricia McPherson, William Daniels, Catherine Hicklin, Brett, Bert Freed, Don Galloway, Richard Kane, and Charlie Picerni. Um, big notable guest star in Catholic, Catherine Hicklin. She's like a soap opera stud, goddess, whatever. <laughs> Makes that circuit rounds. Um, she would also return for two more episodes of Knight Rider as Stevie Mason in seasons two and four. Yeah, so this it's a very dramatic, like, more I read about this, it's a very dramatic, like, I guess Hasselhoff, like, lobbied for her to play this character. He wanted this episode to have, like, a lot of heart and emotion to it. He obviously knew her and was very sweet on her because after they shot this episode, they got engaged. It was a relatively short-lived engagement, but they got engaged after this episode. So, oh. so yeah, he he yeah he wanted his. Um, she was the, she became his fiance afterwards, and I guess she was a little bit involved in writing the story. Um, there's a, there's actually I'm looking at this 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 website with the, with the trivia stuff. It says uh, this is a quote from Hasselhoff. It says it took me a long time to sell everybody on mm-hmm. it, but I said. 
Catherine's an actress. She's beautiful. Let's do it. And it made for a really, really good episode at the time. So he definitely like lobbied for okay. her, whether it was part of his master plan to propose and stuff. I don't know how deep that goes, but he was definitely like pushing for her to okay. to be this actress or this to play this character. So gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um interesting. Well, the chemistry yeah. is there. I suppose it is. <laughs> but one thing I wanted to point out, I was like, oh, so now Michael's identity is unrecognizable to people who once knew him. How convenient for right. him, yes. <laughs> so now now it's like that. That's what okay. How convenient. <laughs> um yeah, it's uh Stevie uh, Stephanie or whatever. Uh <sighs> She gets like nabbed by people at the beginning, um, yep. trying to do something. It's like uh, there's some guys like it's a setup, get out of here, and she gets picked up by what the cops or some deputy of justice. Yeah, uh, DEA agents. Fed, I think they just say federal agents and like shove her in a car. So mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Um, and he like randomly finds out about this because he gets a paper somewhere. And she's front page news, and he's like Stevie. Um, yes. In fact, when he, um, when he, when he buys a new, there's another, I've, I found a lot of very interesting trivia about this episode. Right. Apparently this was like a big, like a big behind the scenes episode thing here. So yeah, when he buys that newspaper, that newspaper and he like holds it up, obviously right. you know, you get that classic, like the camera sees what he's seeing. It's dated March 4th, 1983, which through really good planning was the day that this episode aired on TV. <laughs> so <laughs> Wow, okay. Well they were into the yeah. they were into the show, so they knew when their night was and that they You're probably right. yes. they were probably doing so good they were like, we're not getting moved. So Yeah, we're we're twenty episodes in at this point. Like we're you know, it's right. it's pretty solid. So <laughs> that is crazy. That's crazy they did that. Um but yeah um He's all like going nuts about this, and Bonnie's like, "Who's Stephanie Mason?" And it, Mike's like, Mike goes, "In my other life, when I had a different face." <laughs> I was like, <laughs> so I, dramatic. I like, well, and and it's so funny that like the pre last episode kind of established uh -huh. like Michael and Bonnie finally settling into this like friendly kind of vibe. Like he got her a yellow rose. Like they like mm -hmm. they. I think they're trying to clarify specifically for the audience, like. Michael and Bonnie are going to be platonic, which is good because this next episode, we're going to meet his former fiance, you know, yeah. like Bonnie's got no chance. So he's still in love with her. He says that at least once in this episode, if, if, if not more times, I'm still in love with her. Yeah. Him, so, yeah. yeah, I, yeah, it's, it's weird. Like he, yeah, he's, he's all about this. We, we do get to see the kit pull out of the semi, which I don't feel like we have ever seen before. To leave to go. Yeah, I yeah, we seem we seem heading in a lot. Um yeah, I think yeah, him him popping out is not a mm -hmm. is not a common shot. So yeah, it's interesting. Yeah. Um yeah, and then there's a... Um, yeah, this is a this is one of those so we have types of episode with Knight Rider, and this one's the Michael mm -hmm. Michael the bodyguard protector episode, because we've had a few of yes. those so far. So there's this is a type, like Michael's gotta get hired to protect somebody or something like that right and this one he takes on largely on his own obviously on the strength of knowing stephanie slash stevie i mean mm. this is this is not really a flag it doesn't feel like a flag sanctioned effort here it's mostly michael pushing the i'm pushing the envelope on this one here so right um so uh he's like I don't know. He goes, he makes his way to, to finding Stephanie um, to like, you know, be a part of this or whatever. Um, there was, was this like, did he like the first time they meet, was it when he snuck into her place or was that later? I think the first, first time it, when he meets Stephanie, I believe is when he bails. Is it when oh, he bails, right. her, he out bails her out? Yeah, he right? does bail. Yeah. And she's like, you seem so, you sound and feel so familiar. <clears throat> and keeps clenching I, her, her necklace. Clutching her necklace and he's like, well, let's get you back to your apartment. She's like, how'd you know I have an mm -hmm. apartment? You know, like up there, like there's like a very blatant breadcrumb trail being established, which is exactly what the writers wanted for this episode, I'm sure. So. Right, 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 right. True. Um, 
But there, there, there is a part where he does go to her place, like sneaks to her place in the middle of the night and walks in, and it was really weird because, um, they were using like all sorts of um, like odd lenses and stuff that didn't feel like Night Rider. Like felt really like a different show almost. It was these, they're using these like big lenses. It it felt giant, and it was like in the dark with the red carpet. It was like it just. It was weird. It was like something I'd never seen them utilize before. Yeah, yeah. There are there are several visual differences in this episode. There's 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 a point a little later on when they go, Michael and Stephanie go on a picnic, for lack of a better term. They're out mm-hmm. they're, they're they're out on the side of this hill, and then oops, there's a sniper getting ready to shoot them. And there's like very wide shots of them like running down the hill trying to get away from the sniper, and then. The sniper shoots, you know, it's just, yeah, it's all, there are very, it, it feels more cinematic. And again, I don't know if that was a result of all this. There's, there's really the more that I was reading up on it, the more that there's this huge backstory about mm. Hasselhoff and Catherine Hickland and all this stuff. So I don't know if it was Hasselhoff being his star power to throw around a little bit to be like, Hey, this is going to be a big episode, you know, this is going to be a big to do or whatever. But yeah, this one had a, a visually had a very different vibe than your average and we have, Rider episode. We have a director that hadn't directed in the series yet, and this is his only episode too. So maybe right. that's that's part of it as well. Um, at this episode, like, there's this a lot of courting stuff in this episode. Like, not mm-hmm. a lot of it's a lot of character drama. It's not a lot of like plot drama or action based stuff there's a drive-by shooting scene which yep gets bulletproof so it's okay um (laughs) and stuff there is i mean there is some action and stuff but like it's very much uh, the chunk of this episode is filled with walking through the mountains there's like a montage of them walking Mm -hmm. through the mountains and stuff um (laughs) With the White Bird song, of course, White playing bird, heavily yep. in the background. So. <laughs> White Bird, and there's another song called "Heart of the Night," which is featured in here. Yep. Um, it's it's funny, like they have that Juice Newton song used twice, mm-hmm. but then like all the music for a while now has felt like they're pulling other, like Juice Newton knockoff songs or something. Yeah, into you're it. right. Like, like, <laughs> it's not her, but it sounded like it. So, uh, well the. The original title for this episode was The Long Way Home. So I wonder if once they secured the rights to White Bird, I wonder if they were able to rewrite a little bit on the fly to work that into the plot a little bit. So, you know, there's the whole thing that at the end Stephanie talks mm. about. You know, there's the White Bird that that, that that never lands. And, you know, I'm going into witness protection. So I feel like the White Bird who will never land and this, that, and the other. So I wonder if they added mm. some of that. Maybe, maybe that was the part she wrote. I don't know. That's pure speculation. But uh, um, but yeah, it's definitely um, it, it definitely feels like this episode had some had some adjustments uh, right. all the way throughout. So. And she does get she does get put in the hospital, and that's a big part of this too with the drama. <laughs> she does. So. She she spends a good chunk in a uh, coma, for lack of a better right. word. After after the after the sniper shoots her, she yeah she spends several several scenes in the in the hospital with Michael kind of hovering over her, him going off to play his toughy guy role where he's got to go lean on the bad guys to try to get them to to mm. crack and give him the information he needs and then back to the hospital and yeah it's very very interesting vibe. Michael sad and uh Ooh, yes. yeah like uh, Devin I love it he's like sitting in the like cafeteria and Devin's like I had a great breakfast made all your favorite things steak eggs greasy potatoes I was like, that's a Michael Knight breakfast right there. Michael Knight breakfast of champions. I, I, I get the feeling that maybe again, this is all this, this is pure speculation, but I get the feeling that maybe they're like, listen, we're getting ready there. We're wrapping up the first season. This one's going to, this one's going to air late in the season. Like, you know, we've got, we've got a good vibe about this so far. Like, let's really, we're going to give you some scenery yeah. to chew on. Like we're going to like, this is going to be like your Emmy push here. Yeah, like if there's really one episode with an Emmy. Yeah. <laughs> We're bringing your real life so girlfriend big. in here to get you to motivated. To, yeah, isn't it crazy? I've I've I found a, 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 a sidebar back to Catherine Hicklin and the whole proposal thing. I found um, uh, ju- just here recently. I I, I found a, a quote pulled from the 1985 soap opera Digest where she talks about oh wow what what this was and the, this is a quote from Catherine Hicklin. It says this this was her quote. It says. 
I was playing a character named Stevie that I had written and created, especially for the show. Oh, so she, in her mind, right. she thinks that she's a big piece of this. The last day of shooting also happened to be my birthday, February 11th. And David Hasselhoff had a birthday party arranged for me at our dinner break. There was a huge cake that was personalized, all the trimmings. And then he proposed to me in front of 125 people, crew, cast members, producer, director. The ring was hidden underneath the hood of a replica of Kit on top of the cake. Oh. And on the cake, there was an engraving that said, open the hood. So I opened the hood <laughs> and underneath was an engagement ring. I was in complete shock. It took me about five minutes to reply to his question. Finally, I blurted out, absolutely. So it was a big thing. Wow. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Wow. Who knew? Who knew? <laughs> wow. How many ladies could say they had her engagement rig under Kit's hood? Like not uh, not many, it, I would imagine. So it's good, so good for cheesy. Her. I love it. It's so cheesy. I love oh, yes. it. Oh it, my god. It is very, very oh. it's it's very on brand for Hoff and the eighties. Yes. So <laughs> Ooh, okay. I know. Wow. It's, it's a lot. It's a lot to take in. <laughs> is, I love, I'm glad you found that. I am so glad you found that. that is... <laughs> That's from the February 26, 1985 edition of the Soap Opera Digest. All right. So. <laughs> That's excellent. Soap Opera Digest. I remember that at the grocery store line. Hey, absolutely. Was, uh, one of them. Uh, gosh. Um. Yeah, she. I mean, she does have a moment with a good moment with Kit where uh, Michael's like trying to show it off, and like Kit won't talk. He's like, yeah, yes. he talks, and uh, she's gonna think I'm crazy if we don't talk. <laughs> and I did pick up on one of her things. So she says, "I'm still amazed that someone has a phone in their car." So that must be more of a thing that you and I have given it credit for at this point. Yeah. So that must be some sort of normalcy of having car phones right now, because you and I have been like, I don't know if that's a car. like. Yeah, there were there was one episode where I feel like they like the quote unquote car phone was like a real like a corded phone was like a, like there was like a house phone in the car. I'm like, that right. can't be it. Like it has to be like those big like CB style phones. But I'm like, no one's just going to take a phone off the kitchen wall and throw it in their car like that. doesn't yeah. make any sense to me. So. <laughs> right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. True. Um, but yeah, anyway, so this episode, like it rounds out like she doesn't get in trouble for soliciting herself in Vegas because it never happened. Um, <laughs> Michael gets to smooch her. He cries. She cries. It takes a commercial break so the audience can cry. Um, yeah. And, it, like, and then, like, Devin's upset over a broken vase and clock, and Michael's trying to make amends, uh, but decides to go drive while Devin picks it all up, and Michael and Kit have a heart to heart here. He's like, what is it, Michael? Yeah. He's like, I wonder if she really knew Kit. And Kit's like, look in the glove compartment. And it's a necklace. <laughs> Why did she leave it for you? A mutual friend gave it to us a long time ago. She wanted us to remember him by it. What was his name? Michael Long, Kit. <laughs> Michael Long. Go <Michael> on. <laughs> it is so, so, I mean, it's definitely like very Emmy-ish. <laughs> like as this part is so dramatic. <laughs> before that when she's getting put in the cop car to go into witness protection and they're both like she drives yeah. away and she's crying and he's like looking after her and he starts misting up and uh, I like the production leaned into it this is the only this is or not the only this is the first episode that doesn't end with Kit and Michael driving through the desert in that generic drive away thing right. he ends up just driving down the road so even they're like yeah let's make it let's make it serious like let's go you know let's let's go dramatic yep. here so <laughs> for better or for worse that that's so what it is like, oh yeah so cheesy oh gosh oh yeah. i i don't know but most of the time this episode didn't do much for me like i enjoyed laughing talk about stuff but yeah overall it didn't feel no. like, a, like a crazy big episode like a very right. big deal in the night rider pantheon but with all the stuff that we have in the background it, it, it feels great to us now mm -hmm. but in the moment I don't think anybody knew any of that stuff. So they're like, oh, okay, this is just a really dramatic episode. Yeah, we're well, trying to make it dramatic. We've had some where I feel like they've upped the ante and felt like bigger mm -hmm. episodes so far. And this didn't feel like one of them. No. Yeah. Like Michael and her, because the dialogue says so, meant more than 
previous, but this felt like any floozy that Michael's had to protect before. <laughs> like it was right when there's a girl every week. Like this one is just it, 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 at, at first glance, it feels like they're like, oh, they ran out of ways to put a girl in his life, so let's just shoehorn one in yeah. from his former life. Like it's not until she comes back in the second and fourth season that I think you get a scope of what she's meant to mean to him overall. Right, and he's doing fine next week in the next episode. So. Yeah, back to business as usual. So what are you going to do? Finds another (laughs) woman to woo on for for a week. So it's what it is. But, you know, hey, we'll see you sometime (laughs) in the future, Catherine Hickland. Um, That's right. But until then, Tony, let's shift gears. Look on toward the sunset before we hit the horizon. Where can people find you? Yeah, you can come hang out with me uh, over at sciencefiction.com. I'm the senior editor over there where we do routinely all sorts of news and reviews and we talk about all the goofy, geeky, fun, nerdy stuff over there. If you want to connect with me directly, you can come find me on any of the socials at Tony Schaub or come swing by the old website, TonyShaub.com. All right. Hashtag Michael Longs for her. And nice. I'm on Twitter and Instagram at Brandon4KUHD, written work on YSOBlue.com. Uh, I don't know what's going on with my regular show at this time, but something will be happening, sure. whether it's a commentary <laughs> or, or, or else. I've been busy focusing, uh, recording a Summer of 93 at 30, which has been a blast, and it's going very good. Um, I think you guys are going to like it just as much as last year. But Knight Rider <laughs> will be here on Wednesday that next week. So... Uh, so then from Old Space, Brandon and Tony, not so lone crusaders in a dangerous world, the world of Old Space Show. Thank you for listening. The Brandon Peters Show is a Creative Zombie Studios production. Produced by Brad Shoemaker and Brandon Peters. Written and edited by Brandon Peters. Announcer vocals by Jessica Alsman. Theme song by Metavari. Web design and show art by Brad Shoemaker with Brandon Peters. All music and clips featured in the episode are property of their respective studios and no infringement is intended. Additional information on this and other episodes at brandonpetersshow.com. For any inquiries, press opportunities, or sponsorship, contact mail at brandonpetersshow.com. show is available on Apple Music, Spotify, or anywhere podcasts are found.